Hello, grade 10s. Today we will be looking at the trigonometric ratios on the Cartesian plane. Let's start by identifying the parts of the Cartesian plane. On a Cartesian plane, zero degrees falls on the positive x-axis. Traveling in an anti-clockwise direction, we find that 90 degrees falls on the positive y-axis. This block is called the first quadrant. Continuing in an anti-clockwise direction, we come to 180 degrees on the negative side of the x-axis. The quarter between 90 and 180 degrees is called the second quadrant. The third quadrant falls between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. And the fourth quadrant is between 270 degrees and 360 degrees. All of the quadrants are labeled using Roman numerals. Did you notice that the positive x-axis was labeled both 0 degrees and 360 degrees? We can continue to move around the Cartesian plane in an anti-clockwise direction. This means that we are able to plot angles that are bigger than 360 degrees and smaller than 0 degrees. Yes, that's right. We can even plot negative angles if we travel backward or clockwise from 0 degrees. Let's look at the Cartesian plane in more detail. If we were to plot a point anywhere in the first quadrant, both the x-coordinate and y-coordinate would have a positive value. We join the point with the origin to make the hypotenuse of a right-angled triangle. This line is also referred to as the radius, and because of that, is labeled by the variable r. Theta always falls between 0 degrees and r. We complete the right-angle triangle by drawing a line from point P down to the x-axis. This dotted line is the same length as the y-coordinate value, and because of that, it is labeled y. The x-coordinate value is from the origin along the x-axis. It's important to remember that measurements of length are always positive. This means that the value of r will always be positive. x and y values show us length as well as position on the Cartesian plane. And this is why they can be both positive and negative. Let's explore this a little more. If x is positive, and y is positive, we know that point P and the line R will lie in the first quadrant. If x is negative and y is positive, point P and line R will be in the second quadrant. If x is negative and y is negative, point P and line R will be in the third quadrant. If x is positive and y is negative, Point P and line R will be in the fourth quadrant. As the values for X and Y change between positive and negative, so does the position of point P and line R change. These changes also affect whether the trig ratios will have positive or negative values. Let's explore this in more detail. Remember that Sokotoa helps us to remember that the trigonometric ratios sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. Looking at this sketch, we can see that R is the hypotenuse, Y is opposite, and X is adjacent. This means that sine theta is equal to y over r, cos theta is equal to x over r, and tan theta is equal to y over x. Now that we've established our ratios in terms of x, y, and r, let's see what happens to the ratios as the position of point P changes. If point P is in the first quadrant, it means that x and y are both positive. This means that sine theta is equal to a positive value divided by a positive value, giving a positive answer. Cos theta is also equal to a positive value divided by a positive value, giving a positive answer. 
and tan theta is also equal to a positive value, divide by a positive value, giving a positive answer. From this, we can see that all trigonometric ratios are positive in the first quadrant. Let's see what happens to the trigonometric ratios when we move point P to the second quadrant. X is negative and Y is positive in quadrant 2. Remember that R is always positive. The triangle is drawn down to the X axis and theta falls between R and 0 degrees. Sine theta equals Y over R. The opposite side, Y, is positive, and the hypotenuse side, R, is positive. A positive value divided by a positive value equals positive value. Therefore, the sign of any angle in quadrant 2 will be positive. In cos, the adjacent side, X, is negative, and the hypotenuse side, R, is positive. A negative value divided by a positive value equal negative value. Therefore, the cos of any angle in quadrant 2 will be negative. And in tan, the opposite side y is positive and the adjacent side x is negative. A positive value divided by a negative value equals a negative. Therefore, the tan of any angle in quadrant 2 is negative. We can see that the only ratio that is positive in quadrant 2 is sine. Now that we're getting the hang of this, we can move through quadrant 3 and 4 a lot faster. Both x and y have negative values in quadrant 3. The triangle is completed by drawing a line perpendicular to the x-axis and theta falls between 0 degrees and line r, which has a positive value. Because x and y are both negative, this means that sine and cos will both have negative values. Tan will be equal to a negative value divided by a negative value, which gives it a positive answer. This means that tan is the only positive ratio in the third quadrant. Lastly, at any point in quadrant 4, the x-coordinate is positive and the y-coordinate is negative. We complete the right angle triangle by drawing a line perpendicular to the x-axis up to the x-axis. Theta once again falls between 0 degrees and line R, which is positive. Y's negative value means that both sine and tan will have negative answers. But cos will be a positive value divided by a positive value making cos the only positive ratio in the fourth quadrant. We have gone over some very important points so far, and you will need to learn them off by heart. So let's recap before we say goodbye. Quadrant 1 is between 0 and 90 degrees. Quadrant 2 is between 90 and 180 degrees. Quadrant 3 is between 180 and 270 degrees and quadrant 4 is between 270 and 360 degrees. All trig ratios are positive in quadrant 1. Only sine is positive in quadrant 2. The other ratios are negative. Only tan is positive in quadrant 3. The other ratios are negative. Only cos is positive in quadrant 4, the other ratios are negative. This is often referred to as the cost diagram. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, grade 10s. Goodbye.